Well, those Germans are real dug in. I wonder how I could get them out. Oh, I think I read this in the field manual. Just throw an end block clip. Did you really just throw that on the ground thinking I'd hear that? You, you thought that, didn't you? I mean, it seemed like a good idea at the time. I don't know whether to be insulted or... You think I'm going to hear this little ping? I'm, I can't hear anything. I can't even hear myself think with the bombs every 10 seconds. When you think I'm going to sit here and be insulted by you, you, you armies are stupid. How are we losing this war? And I'm probably not getting my pension now thanks to this war, so don't even get me started with that. I can't wait to tell my grandkids about that little trick. Well, hello, my brothers in Christ. It's Austin Vintage Warfare here today to talk to you about something that makes me big sad. By the way, go ahead and uh, like the video. It helps uh, with the algorithm, and as we all know, the algorithm requires blood. It requires your sacrifice. Go ahead and do that, and it will help me out. Really appreciate you. So I've seen a lot of comments talking about, you know, well, people still think Mosins are like a hundred bucks and this, this, and that. So I'm here to talk about the absolute state of the military surplus market right now. So the military surplus market, it's kind of a nightmare. Um, so as a reference point, we have a Mosin Nagant M9130 here, currently in the Sigma grind set configuration with the red dot on the, uh, on the front of the receiver there. And actually technically co-witnesses technically co-witnesses with it um, I guess you could consider that lower one-third <laughs> oh, I'm gonna run it like this in my next competition but the point of that is this used to be the cheapest military surplus rifle on the market um, used to be like 50 bucks guys like I think I bought this one at the end like the end of the uh, heyday of like cheap mil surp guns I think I got this for 90 bucks that's no longer $90. In fact, this is like a mid-tier uh, military surplus buy at this point. This is about 500 it's about 400 to $500 now. That's insane. Now, you got to you got to think about it. If this is going up in value like that, same with the SKS by the way. The S I've seen SKSs being sold out here for $900. I don't think they're worth anywhere near that. I've seen them on Gunbroker for like 500. But you get the point. They also used to be that cheap. But now the cheapest military surplus rifle on the market is this Carcano. This is an M38 Carcano TS Troupe Speciale. I don't speak spaghetti, but I'm doing my best. So this is chambered 6.5 by 52 Carcano, though, and that's what makes this kind of a pain is, yeah, it's cheap. It's $200. You know, that's a good deal right now. In today's military surplus market, that is a good deal. However... Unless you could find the PPU uh, reproduction ammo, which shout out to them for even reproducing the stuff. Can somebody, can somebody please get into reproducing more obscure calibers? Like, there's so many of these rifles. Um, I would include the Arisaka, uh, the Type 99 or the Type 38 or whatever. Uh, the problem is there is like no ammo for those. Can somebody please, please reproduce 7.7 .7 by 58? Do you know how many Arisakas are out there? It's stupid. I'm, I mean, look, I'm not a business guy. It's probably, well, I am a business guy. I mean, it is probably, probably pretty expensive to reproduce the ammo, but like, I don't know, just charge more. I don't know. I didn't go to business school. So you get the idea though. Carcano being kind of the low tier, Mosin, Enfields, anything from that five to $700 range, um, which is probably the most common. It's still kind of pricey, like Swiss rifles, like the K31s and stuff like that. I even think those have went up. Then you start getting into the more expensive ones like the Springfield 03A3, the Finnish M39. I have one, but I am lazy and I'm not going to go grab it right now. But those are like $800 to $1,200. I think the Springfield 03A3s are like legit like $1,200 to $1,500. People try and get rid of them for that, about that price. And then you start getting into the high tier. Um, not the collectible tier. I don't, I, that's like the Luger, the Gewehr 43, like 
I want to give Air 43 so bad. I wish you guys knew. And then you start getting into the more expensive stuff, okay? Now you have, like, uh, semi-automatics like the SBT-40, the M1 Garand, like this one. <laughs> that never gets old. These are just stupid expensive right now, too. They used to be from the CMP, like, hell, you can get a rack grade one for, like, 500 bucks-ish. Um, five to six, or five to seven hundred. Nowadays, um, they're like, they're one of the most gouged rifles on, uh, Gunbroker, for one. Um, so they're, you know, I've seen them go for like two grand. Uh, they're, they're worth maybe a thousand dollars, to be honest, with these current prices. If it's in pristine condition, like, okay, yeah, twelve to fifteen. Yeah, they're, they're stupid expensive, and really for no reason. I... There's so many warehouses around the United States filled with these things. It's not like these weapons are rare. They're literally in our backyard, and it's just the government's hanging on to them because government gonna government. But that's where we're at. I mean, these are expensive rifles. You look at the SBT-40, um, the... I'm not even gonna say the Gewehr 43. That's, like, collectible tier at this point. Um, but the SBT-40 is another one that is incredibly expensive right now. Um... And they just, they just frankly, they used to not be at all. So, you know, if you have Milsurp, you know, I would advise hanging on to it because these are only going up in value. And, you know, I, I talk about sporterizing weapons all the time. Just understand, when you sporterize a gun, you're devaluing it by, like, the tune of usually, like, 70% or more in a lot of cases. Sometimes, whatever, you sporterize a Mosin-Agant, Eh, okay, you, you devalue it by like, I don't know, like a couple hundred bucks, but, you know, if you sporterize a, like, I don't know, we'll just say a German K98, uh, you, you devalued it by like 60% of what you could have gotten for it. Those are, I, I bought one of my first rifles was a K98, Borgeswald, or made in Borgeswald, Germany, 1939. It was 300 bucks. Pristine condition. I walked right out of the gun show with it. And it's worth a lot more than that now. So, stonks. But that's going to do it for me today, guys. This is Austin at Vintage Warfare. And I forgot my outro. So, see you in the next video. Later.